I am Alan Kurtz. I am the senior gameplay designer on Battlefield 3. I've been with DICE for about seven years now. Uh, I started out on 2142. I've also worked on both the Bad Company series and uh, Battlefield 3 is my first big, real Battlefield game. One of the things we really wanted to bring to the Battlefield 3 Premium experience was weapon customization. We looked at what was missing from our weapon customization and we said, we want camouflage, we want weapon camos that our premium players can use on the battlefield, show off, show that they're dedicated Battlefield players. So we have brought the F2000, the Peshneg, the L96 sniper rifle, and the Scar H carbine, and we have brought you some weapon camos that you can unlock through assignments. We think it'll let premium users really stand out on the battlefield. In close quarters, you're getting 10 new guns. Six of those are really focused on the close quarters experience, and four of them are weapons that each kid can take back to the greater battlefield and have a new experience with. So for our assault guy, we brought the AUG A3. It's an Austrian bullpup assault rifle. So you got the clip behind the trigger, which is gonna give you a better maneuverability in close quarters. You're gonna have better fire from the hip, and you're gonna be able to navigate with that weapon and bring it onto target faster than you would with, uh, say, the M416. Similar performance-wise, but that uh, close combat edge is gonna give you something to really think about when you have the AUG. For the engineer, we've got an Israeli bullpup. It's called the MTAR. It's a super short version of the Israeli assault rifle called the TAR-21. Super high rate of fire, a higher rate of fire than the engineer has seen before. Not super accurate, because it's so short. Kind of like a, a FAMAS for the engineer. I know that guys have been looking for that, that super high rate of fire volume output gun, and I think we've really brought that with the MTAR. The high-tech weapons come to the support kit this time, with the new LSAT is part of the Army's lightweight weapon technology. And this is a belt-fed machine gun, but it has a special new linking system and a different bullet that makes the, the weapon much lighter than most belt-fed machine guns. So it doesn't have a super top rate of fire, but it has a really good mobility, and it's kind of a nice blend between an M27 and an M249. Something that sits in the middle that you can use in close quarters, but you can put a bipod on it and hit some long range if you need to, and something that I think really fits in between those two. And I think uh, support players will find that that gives them an edge in these close quarters in combat. For recon, we went out and we found the M417. And this is a, a semi-automatic designated marksman rifle. The 20 round magazine, which is a bigger magazine that's been available, with also the, the big hard hitting round from the Mark 11 with the 7.62 NATO round. So you're gonna get the power of the 7.62 NATO in a shorter, more controllable package and a bit more mobility. It doesn't have the accuracy that uh, the other semi-auto sniper rifles does, but it's definitely gonna give you an option beyond just the SKS in a close quarters environment for playing recon, for being that team player with your beacon and with your tugs and giving your players the intel and still being able to compete on a, on a close combat level. When we look at weapons, uh, we've got the ones that are class specific. We also always have some all kit weapons, uh, our PDWs, our shotguns. And we looked at our personal defense weapons and, and we realized we didn't have something that was hard hitting up close with a good rate of fire. So we looked at the M5K. It doesn't have a very big clip, but it fires a powerful nine millimeter round. Uh, it's kind of a spray gun, not super accurate, but great mobility, super short. It's got the foregrip on the front for some great controllability and, and basically just lets a player get in close, hit hard, no range at all, but you know, basically lets anybody kind of be that ultimate close quarter specialist with this gun. Then we looked at the flip side, which is the shotguns. We wanted to bring back a pump shotgun that people could say, you know, this is a combat pump shotgun. So we have brought over the SPOS 12. It's really a, an accurate pump shotgun. It's got a tight spread. You gotta really get in close with it or be real accurate with it to get the full effect of it. It's a little bit of a blend of the speed of a semi-auto with a nice tight choke on the shotgun. Your pellets are gonna land together. And I think we'll find some players are gonna really enjoy the new aspect of this boss 12 when it comes into their close quarters combat. The other four weapons, we looked at roles and places outside of the close quarters pack because you can take all 10 weapons from close quarters into any map. 
Um, and that's been really important for us. So on the Assault Kit, we brought over the SCAR-L. And this brings a super popular SCAR platform from the engineer over to the Assault side. It's a relatively low rate of fire, and it fires the same round as a M16, but it's much more controllable. It's really good at hitting mid and long range. It's got good accuracy, it's a nice balanced gun. And I think players who generally gravitate towards an L85 or an AK will find that this gun might be a little bit more their style and in the, the mid-range combat. For the engineer, we've got the ACWR which is an American assault rifle. It's pretty popular today with the Special Forces. And we've done it up differently here. Uh, we're bringing the 6.5 millimeter round, and this is a Special Forces round specifically developed for short-barreled rifles. For getting out there and, and giving a bit more impact at range than the 5.56 round typically does. So your ACWR isn't gonna be quite as good up close as most carbines, but it's going to give you a bit more range and it's gonna give you a bit more controllability than the SCAR-8, which is our long range carbine today. So I think it'll fit into a niche where some players have been complaining that they don't quite have what it takes at distance with a carbine, while giving them a trade-off that still makes it a balanced gun. Recon has always been about long range. We knew we had to bring in something bolt action that players were really going to be able to say, this is a new bolt action gun, it's something I haven't seen before, something unique. So we went out and looked and we found the JNG-90. This is actually a Turkish rifle, renowned for its accuracy, one of the most accurate sniper rifles in the whole world. We think the players, when they get their hands on this, will be making those long range headshots uh, and really pulling down some marksman bonus with this one. Finally, for support, we've got the L86 LSW. That stands for Light Support Weapon. This is the British Army's Light Support Weapon. It's a clip-based weapon. It's got about 42 rounds or so in the magazine, similar to an RPK or an M27, except this one's Bullpup. This is the big brother of the L85 for the Assault class. Super accurate, great on a bipod, but also has some mobility bonuses, so it'll let it double up in the close quarters environment, especially if you slap a laser sight on there or a foregrip, and you can really get a, a nice, good, accurate, close combat light support weapon. I think players who like the L85 will find a, a support weapon that they can really go to in the L86.